We talk about the sad life of Admiral Akbar on today's Star Wars Legends lore video. So, you think Akbar had a bad death in The Last Jedi? Well, maybe true, but his Star Wars Legends life was far worse. Today, we'll be going over the poor fish man's biography and highlighting really just how crappy his life was. Akbar, of course, was born on the planet Mon Calamari. By all accounts, his early life was fine, but by the Clone Wars, Mon Calamari had become politically volatile and near civil war. The CIS, who saw the planet as strategically important, helped support a Corrin revolution and also invaded the planet. Thankfully, the Mon Cal and Corrin united with the help of the Jedi and Gungans would dispel the Separatists, but for Akbar, this event would mark the end of true peace in his life. From this point on, he would be almost totally dedicated to warfare and rebellion. By the time of the fall of the Republic, Akbar was a member of the Mon Calamari political elite. The planet was heavily subjugated by the xenophobic, human-centric empire. Although Mon Calamari did try to rebel, the empire clamped down, taking Akbar and many others into imperial care. The future admiral was assigned as a personal servant to Grand Moff Tarkin, a total loss of his personal freedom which he would endure for over five years. Years. He was, of course, eventually liberated and would join the Rebel Alliance as a high-ranking naval figure. He would fight valiantly for several years, eventually leading Rebel forces at the Battle of Endor. By this point, he had already seen several lifetimes worth of war, but this was just the beginning. With the fall of the Empire, Akbar was named Supreme Commander of the New Republic Defense Force, the government's highest military position. He was constantly busy, fighting an unending stream of Imperial warlords, galactic invaders like the Toph, and other threats. Akbar was often at odds with high-ranking members of the New Republic, like Borskvalia, and he really struggled to manage the political side of his career. In 7 ABY, one of Akbar's only family members, Jesmin Akbar, was killed in action during a raid squadron mission. In the same year, there was also an attempted assassination against his life by one of his own close aides. Still, he maintained a heavy, unending offensive against various Imperial Remnant factions, managing to kill major warlords, including Zinj. Akbar's long-standing rivalry with Borskvalia was reignited during the Thrawn campaign, when he was accused of treason and jailed. Although Akbar never lost the support of Leia or Mon Mothma, the accusations, which were of course based on Imperial deception, seriously weakened his influence within the New Republic. Things only continued downhill from here. In 10 ABY, the reborn Emperor Palpatine initiated Operation Shadow Hand. Akbar's home planet of Mon Calamari was targeted by the Dark Empire's world devastators, retaliation for the Mon Calamari's role in the Galactic Civil War. The planet was totally ravaged, with substantial loss of life and infrastructure. Later, Akbar would crash his personal B-Wing, which he was using to ferry Princess Leia on a fairly routine diplomatic mission. The crash was a huge disaster for the New Republic diplomatically, killing thousands of individuals and destroying the Cathedral of Winds, an important cultural symbol for the Vors and one of the galaxy's most impressive structures. Thankfully, Leia and Akbar were uninjured, but the Admiral would place a great degree of blame on himself, guilt made worse by the fact that his viewing was purportedly shown to be in perfect working order. In reality, Akbar's shuttle had been tampered with by one of his aides, who was under Imperial control. Akbar returned to Mon Calamari to try to repair the damage done to the planet during Operation Shadow Hand. However, the world was once again attacked, this time by Imperial Admiral Natasi Dalla. Gael would soon return to service, now fighting a unified Imperial Remnant. At the Battle of the Darksaber, Akbar's friend and rebel hero Krix Maidine would perish while trying to destroy the Hut's superweapon. In 23 ABY, Akbar's political rival and all-around pest Borskvalia was elected as New Republic Chief of State. Disappointed, Akbar retired, though still participated somewhat in the New Republic Navy. He was, at this point, in fairly poor health. His peaceful retirement, however, was very short and interrupted by the Yuuzhan Vong invasion. Akbar, now very ill, returned to help plan the Battle of Ebok 9, which would devastate the Vong invaders and reinvigorate the New Republic. 
He would die shortly afterward, before the end of the war, of sickness and old age, undoubtedly worsened by the stress of war. Although Akbar had friends, he was not known to have lovers or children. He dedicated his entire life to war. He sacrificed as much as anyone in the Rebel Alliance or New Republic, and went through countless tragedies. Even in his old age, he couldn't retire comfortably, instead having to fight out his last days against a dangerous alien invader. Akbar had a rough go in Star Wars Legends and didn't even live as long as his canon counterpart. Let's just take a second to honor his memory. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, this has been Eckhart's Ladder. May the Force be with you.